Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on speed reading and comprehension techniques. My name is Paul Novak. I'm the founder and CEO here at Iris Reading, and we're going to jump right into it here. We're doing a live stream actually on multiple platforms. I know we're streaming on YouTube. Uh, it looks like we're also streaming on LinkedIn and Facebook. So wherever you're joining us from, uh, welcome. I'm actually broadcasting from the South Florida area, around close to Miami. Uh, let me know in the uh, comments of uh, this session where you're joining us from. I'm always curious. We tend to see people from all over the place. Uh, my hometown is actually Chicago. That's where I was born and raised. Um, I think you're going to find today's session to be extremely helpful, especially if you have a ton of reading to do. I mean, how many of you have a you know a stack of books that you've been wanting to get through, but you just haven't had the time. Or if you're a student, of course, there's constant reading that you're doing. I mean, your full-time job is basically to read if you're in college. So let us know where you're joining from. And I want you to be aware of the materials for today's session. You can find them at irisreading.com slash YTS. Over on YouTube, I'm putting that in the chat there. Uh, irisreading.com slash YTS. Make sure you've got those. It's basically a couple PDFs that you'll need for today's session, and that will keep you uh, keep you in the loop. We're going to measure your reading speed today. We're going to do some exercises that are going to help you to make improvements in your speed. So stick around. And if you aren't already subscribed to us on YouTube, uh, you can just go there, youtube.com slash I'm at Paul Novak. It's pronounced Novak, but it's spelled with a W. It's a Polish last name. I actually got kind of lucky with the Polish last names. I've got a fairly easy one to spell. A lot of Polish last names are hard to spell. Anyway, so subscribe to us, and uh, you could hit the little uh, icon that looks like a bell if you want notifications for other times we upload videos or go live. And we'll be producing content on a weekly basis. Now, here's what we're going to cover today. So first off, how fast do you currently read? You might know things like your typing speed. Not everyone knows their reading speed, so let's figure that out right at the beginning. You'll find out right away if you're average, below average, or above. And honestly, it doesn't matter where you're starting at. What matters is that we make progress, okay? So even if you're above average, you can make more progress in your speed, but also comprehension. I know we're billing this as a speed reading workshop, but I want you to know uh, the obvious. We all know that comprehension is the main point of reading. So your speed is kind of irrelevant unless you're understanding. However, at the same time, we should be aware that you can make improvements in your reading speed. Actually, uh, typically, when we see students that are taking these standardized reading tests, you probably remember taking one of these in the past. I used to hate taking those reading tests because I'd always run out of time. But the faster readers that tend to complete the test usually have better comprehension. They tend to do better, one, because they're reading faster and they're completing the test, but faster readers tend to have better focus. So we're gonna work on that today. How do we improve our focus while reading? And we all have a challenge with that, right? We've got distractions, potential distractions like our phone and other distractions. I mean, I'm uh, using a laptop right now. I try to disable as many uh, notifications as possible when I'm doing these sessions because you could have a little notification that pops up from this program or that program. And it's very easy to get distracted, especially when we're reading on the screen. Or even if you're reading on the page, wherever you're reading, you ever have that situation where you read a whole page or two of text and then you look up like, okay, hold on, I have no clue what I've been reading this whole time. I gotta go back and reread. So we'll work on improving focus. And we'll talk about how to improve comprehension, how to read faster on the computer screen. The average person reads slower on the screen. We'll work on improving your speed when you're reading digitally and how to build up your speed with practice. There are exercises you can do. We're gonna do some today in the session that can help boost your reading speed. And we'll also talk about strategies for reading complex information. It's one thing to read a book like this, uh, which is an, ex this is uh, on second thought, outsmarting your mind's hardwired habits. It's not extremely technical material, but what if I'm reading a psychology textbook or a textbook uh, in the field of neuroscience? Those things are a lot more detailed. How do we approach that complex information? We're gonna be covering that today. So as readers, we really want to be focused on three key areas, that is speed, we wanna read faster, uh, but we also need comprehension, obviously, and we also need retention. I want to draw a distinction between comprehension and retention because the difference really here is important. 
Comprehension is what are you understanding the very moment you're reading that information? So that could be, when I say in the moment, I mean at the present time, in real time, what are you understanding? And your comprehension might be pretty good at the moment. And then your retention might be terrible. We can forget things later on. You ever have that? You study all night for a test and then you get to a question on the test and you're like, oh my gosh, I know that I know this, but I seem to have forgotten or I can't like locate the information. Sometimes they call that the tip of the tongue phenomenon. So that's a retention issue. It's not a comprehension issue. You got the information while you were reading it. We're just having trouble recalling that information. So it's more of a memory problem. Speaking of which, if you have not checked out our memory course, if you go to irisreading.com slash courses on our website, uh, we've got courses that focus on improving memory. So you can do a deep dive on that, especially if you need to memorize information. I'd highly recommend checking that out. Uh, go to the website. I put the link in the chat on YouTube. Um, so check that out. Let's get right into how most people tend to read. So here's how most people tend to read. There's this green dot on the screen bouncing around word by word. And of course we read like this and sometimes we go back. <laughs> We're like, hold on, that didn't make any sense or I missed that, let me reread. There's basically a few old reading habits that we gotta change if we're gonna start reading faster and more efficiently. And one of these old reading habits is called fixation. So fixation is just something your eyes do. They tend to fixate on a word by word basis. And the problem with this habit is you're perfectly capable of reading more than one word at a time. You can read groups of words. Now we can't do this when we're little. When we're little, we gotta go word by word because you break the word down kind of syllable by syllable. We kind of sound it out like contract. You don't do that anymore. When you see this word, you're like, okay, contract. I don't have to sound it out like syllable. I've seen it many times. The only time you sound out is if you have some like 13 syllable word that you've never seen before. Now, once we gain some fluency, as you already have, I mean, I'm assuming you have, because if you can understand me in English, it means that your fluency is at a certain level. And I do understand there are non-native uh, English speakers here. That includes me. My first language is Polish. Uh, I started learning English around the age of like five or six. Both of my parents are immigrants from Poland. Uh, anyway, so it depends on when you learn the language, but you've got a certain level of fluency, right? Here's the thing. When you get that level of fluency, you can start reading groups of words, two, three, four words to a certain point. I mean, we can't just capture a whole paragraph in one single chunk and process it, but you can do two, three, four words at a time. That's why when you're driving, you already read groups of words when you're driving. If you were taking a road trip to New York City and you saw an exit sign on the highway that said New York City, you wouldn't look at each word individually, one, two, three. You'd just look at it in one single fixation with your peripheral vision, and then you would fixate your eyes back on the road so you don't crash. So, but the funny thing is if the words were buried in the middle of some paragraph, most people would go one by one, like New York City, very quickly. So we wanna change this habit of fixation. There's also another old reading habit of regression that's going back to reread. We've all been guilty of this, right? We Nobody has perfect focus. Sometimes our mind, sometimes we just space out. And that could be because the material is dry. It could be because we're tired or not focused. It could be because the information is very technical. Sometimes you read a sentence, it didn't make sense. You read it again. Have you ever read the same stupid sentence like seven or eight times? And you're like, why is it not making sense? And that can be very frustrating. Uh, but I want you to know that you should never go back after one sentence. And here's why. Yeah, it's possible. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. But it's also possible, maybe this sentence doesn't make sense until I read the next sentence or the rest of the paragraph. That happens pretty often when you're reading. So try to avoid going back after a single sentence. Sometimes you need to read a little further to get the full idea. It's kind of like when you watch a movie, right? You ever watch a movie that's a little confusing at the beginning? You're not sure what's going on. Do you stop the movie after five, the first five minutes and say, you know what, let's rewatch from the beginning. You wouldn't do that, right? You know that eventually the movie's gonna make a little more sense as you go along. Now, the obvious thing here is we do have to improve our focus. We'll work on that today. And also, there is a third old reading habit. This is one of the harder ones to change. You probably remember when you were first learning how to read, you had to read out loud in front of class, right? You remember this dreadful experience? I do. I used to hate reading out loud because I, I told you earlier that English isn't my first language, it's Polish. 
And when I was reading out loud, I was learning English around the age of five years old. I was always messing up on words. And I actually remember struggling with reading for like my grade school career. So I used to hate reading out loud. I was always messing up. And the good news is you don't have to read out loud forever. Eventually, your teacher says, don't read out loud anymore. Instead, read to yourself. Say the word silently in your head. And they have a name for this. They call it subvocalization. So subvocalization is that voice you hear in your head while you're reading. Have you noticed that you hear voices in your head? And I mean, it doesn't mean you're crazy or anything like that. Uh, it's your voice, right? It's, it's normal, okay? This habit is common. Uh, by the way, if you're hearing other voices in your head besides your own, that's a separate issue, okay? But subvocalization, this is common for readers. And the trouble with it is it places some restrictions on your reading speed. Speaking of which, um, we're going to talk a little more about this but speaking of your reading speed, we haven't measured it yet. So let's do that right now first. I want you to refer to the first document. The file name is speedtest1.pdf. You can find all the documents. There's just two PDFs for today's session. If you go to irisreading.com slash YTS, that's where you can find it. That will forward you to a Dropbox link where there are two PDFs, uh, speedtest1 and speedtest2. I want you to refer to speedtest1.pdf. And it looks like this, okay? By the way, if you can easily read this text from my screen, you can just view it from the screen. If the text is too small for you to read, definitely download it so you can have the PDF in front of you. By the way, if you want this text to appear larger, obviously just uh, maximize the video. And by the way, while you're reading, I will disable my webcam so you'll have a little more screen space. It will look like this uh, while you're reading. But before you start reading, let me uh, explain something very, very quick. Basic instructions. I just want you to read the way you normally would. Don't try to go faster than usual. And of course, don't go slower than usual. Read as you normally do, because you want to find out what is your actual reading speed. So we're just going to read for a minute. I want you to read for good comprehension. I've got a timer right over here that's going to beep at the end of the minute. And it's going to sound like that, those little beeps. So you'll just stop reading. And then when you stop reading, you'll see a bunch of numbers on the side. Those numbers are going to help us figure out our speed, okay? So make sure you have that document in front of you right now. I'm going to have it on the next slide over here. I'm going to disable my webcam for a moment, so bye-bye temporarily. I'll also turn off my microphone while you're reading, and we're only going to read for a minute to begin with. And I'm turning off the mic just so you don't have any background noise on my end. But just read the way you normally would. Here is the article. Go ahead and begin reading. All right, go ahead and look at the line where you stopped. Let's figure out what your reading speed was during that minute of reading that we just did. Take a look, figure out your speed, and let's find out what that was. Those numbers you see on the side, they give you an idea of how many words are to the end of that line. So if you stopped at this word right here, even, that's uh, 249 words. From the beginning of the article up to here, it would be exactly 249. If you finish the paragraph, that extra word makes it, of course, 250. So figure out your speed, and I'd like you to write that down somewhere, just so you have it noted. And that's how we can measure our, how we can actually measure our um, improvement, right? We want to know what was my beginning speed, what was my ending speed. So write that down. And actually, if you could do me a big favor, in the link you see on the screen, this is a quick little survey. And if you go to irisreading.com slash S1, that's where you can find 
this survey, or you can scan the QR code there. If you could do me a big favor and enter your information there, we like to aggregate that information over time. So please, if you can, take a quick moment. It'll just ask you for your speed and your, you can estimate your comprehension. So here's what I mean by estimate your comprehension. On a scale of zero to 100%, if you felt like your comprehension was pretty good, you might say 80%. If you felt like it was so-so, you might say 70. If you felt like it was bad, you might say 60 or 50. So you can estimate your comprehension. It's very subjective. Uh, we don't have time to go over a standardized reading test for the minute of reading you did, so that's why we're just saying estimate. But here's the average. 150 to 250, that's where most people tend to fall. So you might be in that range, you might be in another, another range. Maybe you're higher than this, maybe you're lower than that. Whatever your speed is, like I said before, what really matters is that we make improvements, but we wanna know where we're starting from. And of course, your reading speed does, your reading speed fluctuates, right? You're not always going exactly the same speed because it depends on the material, it depends on even your current level of focus. Um, you might read slower before you have uh, your morning coffee. You might read faster after. Actually, that would be an interesting study that I have not yet seen related to reading. Uh, do people read faster when they're caffeinated or not? I'm sure there's a, maybe, I would assume that maybe yes, but probably to a point, right? If you've had like 10 cups of coffee in a day, that could work against you. Anyway, so this is the average, uh, but it's only for like uh, the general adult populace, it doesn't really take into account education level. So if you're wondering, what about like college educated adults? As you would imagine, uh, the average reading speed for college educated adults, generally speaking, is a little faster. It's 200 to 300 words per minute. Okay, so it's a little faster. And also these numbers, by the way, are based on medium level material. When I say medium level, that's if we had to categorize things into three general areas, uh, easy, medium, and hard, as far as difficulty goes, the material you just read would be broadly considered medium in terms of difficulty, if we had to choose one. All that means is we weren't reading advanced level physics, which is pretty hard, and we weren't reading a children's book, which I'm sure you would read faster if I gave you some drop dead, super simple material you would definitely go faster. So when we're reading medium level material, it's somewhere in this range or the range you saw before, 150 to 250 or 200 to 300. And also one thing to note, people tend to read a little bit slower on the screen. There was a study done a few years ago. It's about 32% slower on the computer screen. So that means the average is closer to 136. It can be more frustrating reading on the screen. Uh, there's more distractions, things like that. So. Let's circle back to this topic of subvocalization. Most people are reading and saying the word silently to themselves while they're reading. They call that subvocalization. Well, if you think about it, if you're saying all the words in your head, doesn't that mean you'll basically read as fast as you talk? And that's actually a bit of a problem, no? Because you can only talk so fast. What is the average talking speed? Because, you know, some people talk faster than others. And um, there is an average. The average talking speed is 150 to 250. Same number you saw before. Why is the average talking speed the same as the average reading speed? Uh, it's because of this habit. If you say all the words in your head, then you'll basically read as fast as you talk. That's why we got to change this habit. You don't want to be reading as fast as you talk. What's faster, your talking speed or your thinking speed? I think all of us would agree we can think much faster than we can talk. Actually, our tagline at Iris Reading is reading at the speed of thought because you're perfectly capable of reading at a faster rate than your talking speed. So we got to change these habits. Let's talk about how we change them. But first, the easiest way to start changing them and get a little faster with your speed is to improve your concentration. And this is something I think all of us are interested in because we've all had those scenarios where we just zone out and we lose track of our focus, there's an easy way to get a little better focus while you're reading. And that is when you're reading on the page, like an actual book or textbook, uh, start using your hand or pen as a guide. When I say that, I mean just smoothly going across the page like this while you're reading or with your finger, or some people prefer to use a pen and that's fine too. But there's a reason you wanna do this. It's because your eyes are naturally attracted to motion. So think about it. If there was a bee flying around in your room, it would be a little distracting, right? 
one, because it's a B, and two, because anything that moves around just gets our attention. That's how we're wired as human beings. So let's take advantage of that and let's create some motion on the page. I know this is not as practical when we're reading on the screen. We'll talk about that in a moment, but anytime you have paper-based material, it's always a good idea to use a guide for your eyes. And there's actually a little bit of science behind why you want to do this. It has to do with the way that your eyes move. There are two types of eye movements that all human beings have, a saccadic eye movement and a smooth pursuit. What's the difference between these two? The difference is the smooth pursuit eye movement happens when things are moving around. So if there's a bee flying around the room or you're looking out the window, there's a car driving by, or if you're creating some motion on the page like this, your eyes move in a smooth pursuit. But a saccadic eye movement, that's when things are not moving around. So if you're reading like this and nothing is moving, then your eyes are going to move in a saccadic fashion. Let me show you what that looks like. Apologies for the creepy eyeball. I wanted to have a zoomed in eyeball so you can see what a saccadic eye movement looks like. This is how your eyes are moving when you're just reading like this without your finger or hand or pen as a guide. Your eyes would move in this manner, a saccadic fashion. Notice the little stops. They're very quick. It's like a herky jerky movement. Quick little stops. Now that's saccadic. Let me show you a smooth pursuit. Ooh, that's a lot smoother, right? That's when you're using your hand or pen or finger as a guide. See how that's a lot smoother? You're not gonna feel it because our eyes are ne not very heavy, but let me show you them side by side. Here's a saccadic eye movement on the left, smooth pursuit on the right. Let me show you both videos at once and you could definitely tell a difference, right? This is why you wanna be using your finger or your hand or a pen to guide your eyes while you're reading because it'll initiate and trigger this eye movement. And this eye movement lends itself to better focus. What I mean by that is you'll pay more attention to something that's moving around. We pay more attention to things that move around so much so that our eyes actually move differently. So use your hand or pen as a guide, but I do understand if you're reading off a touch screen or your laptop that's not convenient, I guess you could use a mouse. You could, I mean, I could use the back of the pen here and on my laptop, I can just kind of drag it across the screen like that, but it's not that convenient. Let me go over a separate approach that you can take. And uh, let's take some sample reading material here from The Onion. Not sure if you're familiar with The Onion, but if you're not, you're in for a treat. Uh, the Onion, their tagline, as you can see up here, is America's finest news source. So we're gonna read this article right here. Snowstorm in Chicago delays hundreds of morning murders. So I wanna show you how you could read this faster. And it's a quick little paragraph here. What we do is we copy the text and we're gonna use a program that we created. This is a free speed reading tool and it's called Accelerator. If you go to accelerator.com, that's where you can find it. And I'll post the link in the chat here. Again, it's just accelerator.com. One second here. So here's how it works. You just copy and paste your text into the box. You click begin, and then you click read. When I click read, the text is gonna be blinking on the screen at whatever speed you set in the program. Now you can change that in the settings, but it's set right now to 200 words per minute. Let's try that out first, and then we'll try going faster. But I just wanna show you first what an average reading speed looks like. This is actually even above average for most people on the screen, because remember we said there was a, there was a study done a few years ago where they looked at it, and the average reading speed on the screen was 32% slower in this study. That's why I had uh, this slide over here, 136. So it's around 136. We're gonna go 200 words a minute. It's not too fast. Uh, you should be able to keep up just fine. Just focus your attention in the middle of the screen here. These are the first three words of this article. So we're gonna read it. Snowstorm in Chicago delays hundreds of morning murders. Let's try it out. Here we go.
Okay, now I'm sure that for a good amount of you, you could probably go faster. Let's try it out. We're gonna bump this speed up from 200 to 250. And let's, uh, let's try taking another article here. We're gonna take this one right here. World scientists admit they just don't like mice. We're gonna copy and paste the text. I've already done that just to save some time. And we're gonna bump up the settings from 200 in the settings to 250. So 250 words per minute. By the way, did you notice that it was blinking three words at a time? Now that's something you could change in the settings to whatever you want. You see the settings over here? Here's the chunk size setting. So it's at three. Uh, the default is one, but I recommend you do at least two or three words at a time. And let's see if you could continue going a little faster. We're gonna go 250 words a minute. Last time we did 200. Let's go 250. Let's see if we could still keep up. I think a lot of you will. By the way, I should also mention that while you're doing this, you, you notice the words are blinking on the screen. Uh, since we're doing this as a live stream, we're uploading and then it's downloading to your computer. So if there are any hiccups in the internet connection or when this is how this is encoded through YouTube or LinkedIn or wherever we're streaming, uh, the words on my end are blinking at a very constant rate. And when you use this program, that'll happen as well. So long as our streams and connectivity is perfect all the way, you'll see a consistent blinking. But if there are any hiccups along the way, uh, you might see a consistent blinking and then it'll stop and then it'll blink like this and then it'll stop. And if that happens, my apologies, that's only because there might've been a connectivity issue on my end or your end or somewhere in between, but it shouldn't happen when you're using the program. Let's try going a little bit faster, 250 words a minute, and we're gonna be going through this article right here. World scientists admit they just don't like mice. Let's try it out. Here we go. All right, so that was 250 words a minute. Let's try going a little bit faster. I think you can. What if we did, instead of 250, what if we bump it up to 300 words a minute? So let's take another article. So we have this article, Injured Birthday Clown Taken Behind Bouncy House to be Shot. So we're gonna go 300 words a minute through this. We copy and paste the text, we click begin. Now, by the way, on the bottom here, there's some keyboard shortcuts. Let me zoom in so you can see that. So you can use the up and down arrow keys to increase or decrease your speed by 25. Another useful keyboard shortcut is a space bar that basically is like your pause or play button. So if it's going too fast or if you space out and you gotta go back, just hit the space bar and then you could use the uh, left arrow key to go back or the right arrow key if you wanna skip ahead and you see all these other keyboard shortcuts. So let's try going a little bit faster. I'm gonna hit the up arrow key to change the speed to 300. So we're just gonna click up, up, couple times it's 300 now so let's read this article 300 words per minute this is double what most people would do on the screen so we got this article injured birthday clown taken behind bouncy house to be shot let's try it out here we All right, so that was 300 words per minute. If you were able to keep up, great. 
again, this is a free speed reading tool. There's other things we could dive into, but I don't want to dwell too much on this because there's other things I want to cover in the session. We're about halfway through. There's a lot of other techniques and strategies, so we're going to get to this. You can view this on your own if you go to accelerator.com. We are working on turning this into a mobile app for iPhone and Android as well, and also creating in the process some uh, plugins for the browsers, like these Google Chrome plugins that you can use. Uh, but if you want any updates on that, you can always check it out here at accelerator.com. So let me jump in back into the slides here. Again, that's a free speed reading tool. And really my next question for you is pretty simple. Uh, how do you get better at anything? I think all of us would agree it takes practice. Now, when we're talking about practice as it relates to reading, there are a variety of drills and exercises you can do. We're going to practice uh, a few right now that are called speed drills. And we're gonna take some content and purposely go faster than we would normally read. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna take material you already read. Remember, remember this article, The Age of Distraction? So you already read the first minute, right? I timed you for 60 seconds at the beginning. You figured out your reading speed. Maybe you stopped over here. Maybe you stopped over here. If you're faster than average reader, you may have been over here or further. Wherever you got up to, whatever line you stopped at, I want you to go back to the beginning of the article, and I want you to reread everything that you previously read. But I'm only going to give you 40 seconds. Your goal is you have to get through the material you already read in 40 seconds or less, okay? Now, if you happen to have this printed out or downloaded, uh, and if it's convenient to use your, your hand or finger or pen as a guide, I would recommend doing so, but I do understand some of you might be on touch screen, so I'm not gonna force you or, I mean, I can't force you to do anything, but obviously, if it's inconvenient for you to use your hand, finger, or pen, you don't have to do it, but what you do have to do is move your eyes faster through the text, and that honestly should happen automatically, right? Because we already read the first few lines or first few paragraphs of this article. I just want you to skim through that text in 40 seconds. If you make it to your line early, then just continue reading from where you left off. But at the very least, you got to make it to the line that you were originally read up to. And I'm going to give you 40 seconds on the clock here to do that. So I'm going to disable my webcam here. Make sure you're starting at the beginning of the passage. You got 40 seconds to make it through the material you previously read. Ready, set, and go. All right, that was 40 seconds. Did you make it to your line that you originally read up to? I hope you did. We're gonna make the drill just a little faster. I'm gonna give you 35 seconds now, and we're gonna do the same thing. You gotta start at the beginning. You gotta get to the line that you originally read up to, wherever that may be, in 35 seconds or less. So like I said, if you get there early, just keep, continue from there, just continue reading. But when we're going over the text we previously read, it's not exactly reading. It's actually more along the lines of skimming. I want you to skim through the material you already read in 35 seconds. Okay, let's do it from the top. The goal here is to get used to seeing words faster. Let's try it out. 35 seconds. Ready, set, and go. All right, that was 35 seconds. If you got there, great. Let's do 30 seconds. Now, this is 
going to be double what your normal reading speed is. Now, it doesn't mean we're reading at double. It just means we're going to be skimming at a speed that's double. So you got 30 seconds to make it through the 60 seconds of reading you did before. So again, from the beginning to the line that you originally read up to. So I want you to skim the text. By the way, if you feel like your comprehension is kind of so-so, not that great, then that's fine when you're doing these speed drills because we're purposely prioritizing speed over comprehension. Or you might feel like your comprehension is basically the same or maybe even a little better because you keep going over the same text you previously read. That's fine too. The main goal of this exercise is before we start reading faster with comprehension, we want to start by getting used to seeing the words faster. So that's what we're doing right now. I just want you to see the words faster. From the top to the line you read, you got 30 seconds. Let's try it out. Ready, set, and go. All right, that was 30 seconds. If you got there, great. What we're going to do now is make the drill a little more challenging. I want you to get not to the line you read up to, but I want you to get all the way to the end of the passage, the entire passage. And I'm going to give you more time. You're going to have a very generous minute and 30 seconds. Now, it's not that generous. I'm purposely giving you a relatively short period of time. And there's new material here down here that I assume some of this you haven't read yet, right? So, what I want you to do. Since we're doing a speed drill, this is the equivalent of basically skimming. I want you to skim all this text. Regardless of comprehension, I want you to prioritize speed. So you gotta get through all the text. That's gonna be easy when you get through all this, right? But when you get to the new material down here, don't slow down. Keep going at that faster than usual rate, even though you're gonna notice your comprehension is gonna drop like a rock. That's okay when we're doing a speed drill. Right now we're temporarily prioritizing speed over comprehension. In a little bit, we'll switch our focus back to comprehension. But right now, I just want you to focus on speed. Skim all the text you see on your screen. You got to get to the end of the passage in a minute 30 or less. If you get there early, just go back to the beginning and keep doing the drill until time is up. Okay, let's put a minute and 30 seconds on the clock. Ready? Oh, and by the way, I'll give you a heads up on time. When we get halfway through, I'm just going to say halfway. That way you can kind of pace yourself. All right, here we go. Ready, set, and go. All right, that was a minute and 30 seconds. If you made it all the way to the end, very good. If you didn't make it there, here's what typically happens. People start at the beginning and they're going fast because they're like, ah, I already read all this. And then eventually they get to the new material and they're like, you know what, this article is kind of interesting. Let me uh, let me slow it down. <laughs> so don't, don't slow it down. Try to go faster than usual. We got one more drill, a minute and 15 seconds. Remember, the point of the speed drills is to purposely go faster 
than you would normally read. So I'm asking you to basically skim here, skim all this text. This is gonna be our last drill, and then we're gonna switch our attention to comprehension, but I want you to focus on speed here. So a minute and 15 seconds is on the clock. All right, let's get ready to go here. Last drill, ready, set, and go. Halfway. All right, that was a minute and 15 seconds. Let's go back to normal reading. When I say normal reading, I mean we wanna comprehend now, okay? So speedtest2.pdf, that's the document I'd like you to look at. Again, all the handouts are at the link irisreading.com slash YTS. That's where you could find this particular file. Make sure you have that in front of you. I'm gonna have it on the slide here. And we're going to read normally. That means I want you to slow it down. Not too slow, but also not too fast. I want you to go at whatever speed feels good enough so that you could comprehend the material. So just read basically normally. If you've been using your hand, finger, or pen as a guide, continue do, doing so. But we're basically just gonna read for a quick minute to figure out what's your speed. So you should have this in front of you. We're gonna get ready to read here. Should be ready? All right. Ready, set, and go. All right, that was a minute of reading and take a look at the line where you stopped. Let's figure out what your reading speed was. And I see on YouTube, Antonio says, uh, blessings from Puebla, Mexico. Hello, I've actually been to Puebla. I was there back in J July. I was there with my wife. Her, uh, her uh, mom is from there. So greetings. Uh, thanks for joining us from all the way from Mexico. Again, let us know in the comments where you're joining us from. Again, Chicago is my hometown, and uh, I'm living in the Miami area right now, but yeah, let us know where you're joining us from. Now, figure out your reading speed if you haven't already, and I'm curious to know if you made an improvement. Go ahead and uh, take a note of it. It's not uncommon that sometimes people make their first improvement at this point. And if you did, that's that's great. This is just the tip of the iceberg here. We can make more improvements. So, and if you wanna let us know in the chat or the comments below, please let us know what your initial speed was. What was your ending reading speed? Did you make an improvement? If you did, that is awesome. That's why I've got the success baby over here on the next slide. And we only did a few drills, but I want you to know how they work, so let me explain that. And there's some other things I wanna cover as well. And if you could do me a big favor, 
if you go to irisreading.com slash S1, same link as before, and enter your speed there and your an estimate of your comprehension. Again, you can just scan the QR code here or type it into your browser. I also put that link in the chat on YouTube, so you can just click on that link, irisreading.com slash S1. Uh, we like to aggregate that data over time. So please, we've got thousands and thousands of data points, so we would greatly appreciate it. Um, now let's talk about how these drills work. I like to compare it to being on the highway. You know, when you're on the highway, you're driving faster than usual, but how does it feel when you get off the highway? Doesn't it feel kind of slow? Why? Because maybe when you were on the highway, you were going 70 or 80 miles an hour. You get off the highway, now you're going maybe 40, and it doesn't feel that fast. These drills are meant to work in a similar manner. What if you get used to seeing words at a speed that's like double your normal reading speed? Well, then eventually when you stop doing the drills and you drop your speed down to something that's maybe a little higher than usual, it's not going to feel that fast. That's how these drills start to work. But let's talk about comprehension here. There's some simple ways we can squeeze out better comprehension when we're reading. So first, you should always be changing up your speed, sometimes slowing down, sometimes speeding up. But when should you slow down and speed up? Here's a good rule of thumb. You should slow down on the first sentence of a paragraph and then speed up after that. So you slow down here, speed up here, slow down here, speed up there. Why would we slow down on the first sentence of a paragraph? You probably already know, right? The first sentence of a paragraph is almost always the main idea, or if you want to call it a topic sentence, introduction, however you want. We know this is how we were all taught to write. Let's take advantage of that. So here we have an article called India's Skills Famine, right? So the topic is about India. Let's zoom in on this first paragraph here. Uh, first sentence reads, the economic transformation of India is one of the great business stories of our time. Interesting. Now I'm going to speed up, right? We get to the end of the paragraph. Now I'm going to slow it down on the next paragraph. First sentence, look at this sentence here. It reads, but India has run into a surprising hitch on its way to superpower status. Its inexhaustible supply of workers is becoming exhausted. Another main idea. Now we speed up. Next paragraph, how is this possible in a country that every year produces two and a half million college graduates and 400,000 engineers? Interesting. Now we speed up again. Next paragraph, there was a time when many economists believed that post-secondary education didn't have much impact on economic growth. Interesting. See how all these first sentences are giving us a lot of great information. The irony of the current situation is that India was once considered to be overeducated. Interesting. That's a very interesting statement, right? How could a country be overeducated? That is a good thing, right? And now we're going to get our details, right? In the 70s, and it continues. Here's the next paragraph. Since the Second World War, the countries that have made successful leaps from developing to developed status have all poured money, public and private, into education. Interesting. Now we speed up. Here's the last paragraph. India has taken tentative steps to remedy its skills famine. The current government has made noises about doubling spending on education, and a host of new colleges and universities have sprung up since the mid-1990s. You see how all those first sentences are giving us so much information, and if you slow down and speed up, speed up, that gets you into a nice reading rhythm that will help your comprehension. And that's because changing up your speed forces you to pay attention. Think about this. The same thing happens when people talk. Have you ever had maybe a teacher or a professor that spoke in a monotone voice like this? Somebody speaks in a monotone voice, it's very hard to pay attention to them, right? Because a monotone voice, the speed of their voice is the same. The volume of their voice is not going up and down, it's a monotone voice. So when you don't have those fluctuations in speed and volume, it's easy to not pay attention. So, if you change up your speed, and by the way, the same thing will happen to you if you read. If you start reading and you start reading at exactly the same speed on every line, your brain is going to get bored. So it's a good idea to slow down, speed up, makes you a more dynamic reader. Now, there's one other reason I wanted to read all these first sentences out loud to you. And that is to demonstrate another very important point. 
what if you were going to read this article right now? Wouldn't you read it faster than normal? Because you already know what it's going to be about. You know it's going to be about India. There's a shortage of skilled labor. They're talking about the economy, education. You kind of have an idea what they're going to cover. So if I asked you to read this right now, not only would you read it faster, but you would also have better comprehension. This is a very important speed reading strategy. And that is the idea that you should always inspect what you read. When I say inspect, it just means get familiar with something before you read it. How you inspect the information depends on how it's structured. Like a one page article like this, the way you read this, the way you inspect it is read the first sentence of each paragraph first, then read the entire article. But you might be reading something like a, I don't know, a chapter in a textbook. If you're reading something more complex, how do we approach that information? Well, you're going to inspect by reading the introduction, the headings and subheadings. And by the way, this applies to chapters, reports, journal articles. If I'm going through a textbook chapter, I'm also going to be reading boldface words, things that are in italics, really anything that's jumping off the page, like charts, tables, diagrams. I wouldn't dive into the details yet. I would just read the titles. I'm going to read the conclusion at the end. By the way, at the end, you might also have questions. You ever have that? A teacher says, okay, read chapter five and for homework, do the questions. Well, I'm going to read the questions first, even though I can't answer any, because the questions will get me focused on what I need to know. So inspecting is kind of like, what do you do before you play a sport or exercise? You warm up, right? You stretch out. This is the reading equivalent of warming up and stretching out, the idea of inspect something first. So here's a chapter in a finance textbook. This would be like a finance 101 course, goals and governance of the firm. I drew a big red box around this because this is basically the introduction. If I was starting this chapter on page one, I'd read all of this first. And then on page two, you see all those red arrows? That's where my eyes would be going and I'd be reading the headings, the boldface words, the subheadings. On the next page, there's nothing really that pops off the page besides this table. So I'm just gonna read the title of that table. I'm gonna read the headings, subheadings, boldface words, page by page. Eventually I'll read the conclusion at the end and then I'll go back to the beginning and we already read this, right? So let's just start here. And now we read the chapter. So it's always important to inspect something first. And this leads us also to a method and approach you want to take when you're reading just about anything. And there's a reason why our organization is called IRIS. It's an acronym. And it's an acronym for how you would approach something to read it very, very efficiently. It starts with an inspection. Step two is to read, right? So we inspect first and then we read. But when you're done reading something, most people, when they're done reading a chapter, they're like, okay, I'm done. And that's it. Uh, so what you want to do really is. When you're done, take a moment to inquire about what you just read. And when I say inquire, I mean ask questions. Questions help focus the mind. So you might ask questions like, uh, what are the most important takeaways from what I just read? Or questions could be more specific. Maybe I have a test coming up and I ask questions like, all right, what's gonna be on the test? What do I need to memorize? Okay, well, that leads us to the final step here, store. How am I going to store this information? Like, what am I going to do? Maybe uh, I'm going to make sure I'm taking notes during this process. And there's a there are strategies for taking notes. And we actually have on our website, if you go to irisreading.com, a course that goes entirely into unique ways to take notes in an optimal way. But storing could also mean storing in your head. Like, how do you memorize something? Again, go to the website if you're interested in an, in a course on how to memorize. But remember those speed drills that we did earlier today where you were going faster than usual? This final step could also be where you do a speed drill. So let me explain how you do these drills because remember we said uh, you wanna go faster than usual? You wanna go about double your normal reading speed. So that means if you're reading at 200 words a minute on average, okay, well you wanna practice at 400. So eventually you can get to something like 250. If you're reading at 250, you practice at 500. So you can eventually get to 300 words per minute. When I say get to that, I mean getting to that point and understanding the material at this speed. Now, if you're already reading at 300, you practice at 600 and so on and so forth. This is how we can build up our speed. Remember that analogy I gave you about driving on the highway? If you're going 70 miles an hour, 
eventually when you get off the highway, 40 doesn't feel that fast anymore. Same thing goes with reading. So we want to build up our speed over time. By the way, we have a, a course that's called our Speed Reading Mastery Course, and we dive deep into the topic of doing these drills, remembering information, note-taking. So we inspect first, we read next. But if you're doing these drills on your own, you want to time yourself here. So you do maybe 20 minutes of reading. Let's say it took you 20 minutes to read the chapter. Well, then your speed drill is going to be 10. What if it took you uh, 12 minutes to read? Well, then your drill is gonna be six. Maybe you read a short article of four minutes, then the drill is two. You can even do those drills using that accelerator program. Go at a speed that feels comfortable, and then when you're done, double it, and go through the same material twice as fast. That's how you can practice these drills. Now, again, if you're interested in the topic of storing and memorizing, go to the website. Um, also, if you're interested in some free content, uh, the articles we read earlier were extracted from this book here, Focus, Simplicity Manifesto in the Age of Distraction. This is a great book. It's a quick read. It's 100 pages. Uh, I have a free version of it that, uh, I mean, the author has given us permission to freely distribute the PDF of this book. If you want me to send it to you, just shoot me an email. My email is paul at irisreading.com, and I'll make sure that I just reply with the attached PDF of this book. It's a great read if you want to sharpen your focus. And of course, that'll help you with reading, that'll help you with productivity. And if you're interested in any of the more advanced courses that we have, go to this link right here. So again, irisreading.com slash courses. If you want to dive deeper into speed reading, we have courses that go into more detail on that, comprehension strategies, maximizing your memory, how to memorize information, how to take notes more effectively, and even a personal productivity course. For those of you that have been sticking around to the end here, we've got a special little code for you. It's just my name, uh, Paul, and that'll give you an extra 30% off. Any discounts we already have on the website, use that code, and it'll give you a discount on top of the discounts that may be there. So I just wanted to give that to you as a thank you for sticking around to the end of this session. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube. If you hit that subscribe button, or if you don't want to subscribe and you just want to hit like, that helps us out a lot. To We want to get this these strategies out to as many people as possible. So that really helps us move the needle. I've got my contact information here on the screen. If you wanna reach out by email, or if you wanna connect on LinkedIn, feel free to send me a connection request. Uh, just let me know that you were in the session today and I'm happy to connect. You can also follow me on Instagram over here, but I wanna thank you so much for attending today's session. I hope you found it helpful. Put some uh, questions in the comments if you have any, and we'll work on doing some content related to that on the YouTube channel. But thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care and feel free to keep in touch. Thanks.